Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk. This is Yu Sai, and today we're going to be talking about hair, interior design, inspiration, and passion with my great friend for a decade long that we know each other, John Ruggiero. Hello, John. Everybody hey, say hi what's to John. Hey, what's going on? How are you? Ah,、uh, we're doing really well. And you're doing good in Palm Springs, John. It's it's you know, it's crazy what's going on. But if I have to be anywhere, I'm so happy I'm here for sure. So. Well, And、I、do you, and do you need to say that we've known each other for a decade? A decade. It, it, we, have... we met each other right out of high school, which is really awesome. <laughs> Amazing. I, I like that very much. <laughs> well, for those of you guys who don't know John, John's actually a celebrity and fashion hairstylist. We work with numerous, numerous amazing top photographers. And when I first started my my journey in editorial photography, I saw his work with Alan Longworth. I've seen his work with so many different artists and. I wanted to work with him, and right off the bat, we started our very first shoot together on Harper's Bazaar, UK. So、right. that was our journey together. But before we get to that, I love to know, and I love people to know a little bit how you got started. Um, I actually was um, I was like a club kid, and I um was doing a lot of my friends' wigs and hair um. Just for everyday life, and it was the mid '90s, and、um, we were obsessed with Jean Paul Gaultier, as every gay boy in the '90s was. And I remember one day、um, a friend of mine saying, "Oh, you should do this for Jean Paul Gaultier because you're pretty good at it." And I was like, "Is that a job?" And he's like, Wait, "Yeah." When you like, say you were a club kid, you were doing hair on yourself. No, no, no. no. Like I was、um, a eighteen, nineteen-year-old. Kid who dressed up and went to clubs and did lots of drugs and every you know every week we all had a different look you know、um, and so we were always very inspired by fashion and、um, like I said like John Paul Gaultier was the god and Madonna was a huge influence on me shocking and.、Um, And so that was kind of my life. Is just like these friends of mine. We every every week we would、uh, get these looks together and and go to clubs and、um, and someone had mentioned that I should do it for a job and I was like this, I didn't even realize it was even something you could do. I didn't realize that when I looked at Vogue that someone actually did the hair. You just don't put two and two together. And so then I started kind of taking notice of who was doing the hair and the makeup and. Orlando Pita and Kevin、mm. O'Quinn were the two that I kept seeing their names, and I think it had a lot to do with the drugs and being young and stupid. I was like, "Oh, I'm going to go to New York, and I'm going to go to Bumble and Bumble because that's where Orlando Pita is, and I'm going to get a job there." And <laughs> so, you know, it didn't happen that quickly. But basically, where were you went- before New York, though? Where were you? I w- I lived in Connecticut. Oh, I lived、okay. in、um, I lived in Seattle for a year,、um, and so I went to hair school. And the second I was out of hair school, I moved to New York City and lived in the Lower East Side in a a tenement lounge、uh, and shared a bathroom and did the whole thing. And very brazenly, as a nineteen year old, went into Bumble and Bumble and was like, "I want a job here. I want to." I want to do editorial. I want to do runway, and they were like, "Yeah, good luck." You know, they're like, you know, basically Connie, who I will never forget, and I still think of her.、Um, she she was our manager at Bumble. She said, "Yeah, you and every other you know gay boy in this in this town wants to do that," and I was like, "Oh." She said, "You're going to be."、Um, sweeping floors and getting coffee, and you know, it doesn't happen overnight. And, But that seems to be a dissimilar story to a lot of hairstylists, right? Yeah, definitely.、Home. And you know, it's funny because you know when I when I did finally get to Bumble and I started to realize how、um, how hard of a dream it really was.、Um, Orlando Pita didn't even work at Bumble and Bumble. I don't know where I even put the two together. It was actually、um, a amazing hairstylist who you all need to follow on Instagram because his Instagram is the best, and his name is Ward. Ward is 
fucking getting me through this quarantine. He is a genius. He is, he's also a genius hairstylist and an artist. But he was actually the lead hairstylist at Bumble and Bumble when I got there. And so I got there and I have a hard time learning. And so I, I would take all these classes that they give you and I could not learn how to do a basic haircut. I couldn't even cut a straight line. I was just, re I just, my brain doesn't work when you show, I, I just, I didn't understand like A and B and you hold it out like this. It made no sense. And there was students in the class who were way better than me. And, but I was, I was passionate. I, I, um, I wouldn't give up. And, I, and when I wasn't working, I'd be at the salon doing anyone's hair who would let me. Every style I would, I would try to, you know, like a, a, a runway style that I would see, I would try to replicate. And they watched me trying so much harder than everyone else. Um, because I wanted it so badly. It wasn't, a, it wasn't like if I was going to make it, it was when I was going to make it. But were you at the time still going to clubs? No, I kind of like, at that point, I kind of like became super focused on doing, on doing hair. I, mm -hmm. Like I had a really crazy look when I was going to clubs and I toned it down and, um, and I was just really determined to make it. And they kept telling me, Ward will never like you. Ward is a very straight, macho guy. He, um, they're like, you guys won't get along. And I was like, no, just give me a chance. And they're like, no, like he, we know him, he's tough. You, you guys won't ever, will ever, you guys will never make it. And so for like two years of like sweeping floors and getting coffee and doing classes and finding models to do haircuts on, um, Ward's assistant got sick. And they were like, here's your chance. Go, don't fuck this up. And I walked in and, in, and he was working on Giselle with Steven Mizell. Like, right wow. off the fucking bat. That's what wow. I was into. And she And she's huge now, but she was so big then. She, you know, mm -hmm. she, was, she, was, she was Giselle at 18. And I, it was like the years of, prepping for this was that it came to this moment and he said to me why don't I know you like we were there for you know a couple hours and I'm very quiet even like on set with you guys I'm I take it all in I'm quiet it's not the John show every once in a while I'll say a, a, you know a remark <laughs> and um I I like to be in the background you know and so I was like that with him and he was like why don't I know you and I said they said that we wouldn't get along and he was like, okay. And the next day I got a phone call and they said, Ward fired his assistant and he wants you for everything. Wow. And for two years, I was his assistant every day. He brought me around the world. I worked with Steven Mizell with him. I worked with Richard Avedon, Irving Penn. Um, the legends every, of all legends. Legends. Le like, I, you know, I was so young when it was happening that did you realize it then that you were I didn't in a presence realize it. of I, icons? I, I knew it was amazing. Like, want to hear how stupid it is? So, like, Stephen Mizell, when I walked in, I was like, oh, my God, he shot Madonna's sex book. Like, how stupid is <laughs> that? It's not at all. <laughs> it was well as referential for you. That's what was huge for me. But then, like, you realize, like, that was, like, actually, like, not even a big point, a big moment in his career. Um, so... So yeah, so, you know, it, looking back now, when I am on set with people and they reference like, um, who's someone they always reference? Um, they'll reference Ir uh, uh, Richard Irvin Avedon. Pitt always comes up, who? The classic, Peter Lindbergh comes Peter up. Peter Lindbergh, you know? yeah, we worked with Peter Lindbergh all the time and people reference him and I'm like, that's not a Peter Re Lindbergh reference. Like people don't know the reference nowadays. Like they think, they just, I think sometimes people just want to hear themselves talk. And mm. so they just say things that, um, you know, anyway, well, I think I, on I set, that's a good point. Because on set, often I find that all we're doing trying to, to convince somebody we're right. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I, totally. And, and if you can start throwing names in there, come on, you know, this, this is like yeah. a Steven shoe from Vogue 1995 cover shoe, you yeah. know. And, and if you totally. don't know, you just go, sure, yeah. Oh my okay, God, I go love that shoe. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so yeah, and that so, happens a lot in our industry because um, 
Well, they're insecure in many ways. Uh, oh my God. That, it's, you know? it's so crazy how it's so insane. It's, you know, so like, you know, and kind of after that, I moved to LA because I started working with Danilo because he was like, I ended my apprenticeship with Ward. I'll wrap it up. And started working with Danilo, who was I didn't even know you worked with Danilo. I for a year. He, wow! Yeah, so like they couldn't I, be they couldn't be any more different. I was tell an you assistant. When I was an assistant for three years. Like what? and so so I've I've become that old timer who you know these kids they come in and and they are like they just are Instagram hairstylists and I think it's amazing. I think they have so much drive and balls and I I fucking love it. And I'm intimidated by it because, but at the same time, I'm like, I had a, you know, I busted my hump to learn my but craft. What's crazy is I know you for over a decade. I did not know you actually worked side by side with Danilo because oh, when you I, did it? no, when I first started in the industry, my very first, that wasn't my very first cover, but first very important cover. I was shooting Alessandra Ambrosio when she just landed the angel spot on right. Project Two Secret, and everybody in the world know her. I got commissioned to shoot her for Harper's Bazaar International. <laughs> and and I would call every hairstylist and and Danilo was on that list that this is the man that I want to work with. This is the man that I want to make sure that he's on my set. And that became my bucket list that day. I mean, he wasn't available that day. But since then, we have worked together with he's Gwen a, Stefani. He's a, he is Incredible. a legend. He is a legend. Um, so kind, so amazing so you know so talented um and he kind of you know i uh, somehow i ended up in la where wow. i don't I, and it's funny because i i never wanted to work with celebrities um and i didn't for years i've somehow moved to la and didn't uh, avoided doing celebrity so, unless unless it was for editorial so for guys who were watching that in, in new york a lot of editorials when we say editorials are uh, photo shoots in magazines that they they usually come out of europe london there was a huge movement in editorials and id magazine that you have paris vogue making these incredible movements in in fashion and if you want to be in business and fashion photography hairstylist makeup all the glam team you really need to be in new york or paris and new york actually was taking his taking the power from everywhere else because they're just based on pure population and right. and how hungry people are in New York to strive oh to it's make crazy. it. It's crazy. Yeah. So they became a, it, it became a, an unspoken um, school. You go to New York to graduate and then you decide where you're going to go next. Right. And a lot of people who find the love in photography or hair and makeup in working with celebrities, only place to be is Los Angeles because this is where Hollywood, this is where all the time most of the talents live right. and so when you make that move how was it for you because i know when i made that move there was a lot of judgment on on me well, that well, I, I, well i came i came here so i think i came here again very um ignorant and you know you, you, growing up in in on the east coast you always and especially like being in new york la was always looked down upon you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's like fucking la um, and so when I went there, or yeah, when I went there, um, I was like, oh, I've worked with all these people. I'm going to go to LA. I'm going to fucking blow it up. I'm going to be working with everyone. Like they're, they're, I'm, you know, and that was not the case. They, LA, you know, people give New York a hard time about being cold. LA is 10 times harder of a city. I'm sorry. It is such a hard city. Um, it is, it is, because the thing is, New York, you, you see the knife coming at you. LA, they'll give you a hug and then that fucking knife will go right into your back. And you're like, oh shit, I thought you were my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and so, you know, it was hard for me, um, especially that I, 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 um, I wanted to do fashion still. I don't know, the thing that, and it's such a cliche, I like the weather in LA. I like mm -hmm. the I like the lifestyle. I and that's what kept me there. It wasn't it really wasn't like the work until I started working with Alan Von Unworth. And then finally I got I started working with you. And I honestly I don't you know n n you know, I, I I don't some of my bucket lists many of my career bucket lists have been done with you. You know, my wow. covers of Vogue the covers of Sports Illustrated, um, the trips we do, that you know, like all this stuff. 
I, you know, Ellen, I've done a lot of that. I, I've done Italian Vogue with her. I've done a lot with her. But the stuff I've done with you feels, it's the stuff I hold truish, truest to my heart. It's the stuff that when I'm older, I will always look back the most fondly. Um, we, we've, we've done some amazing things together. It's, it's, you know, you are, you're a true artist. And, you know, like I said, I've worked with Ward with, all these, you know, like with Irving Penn and Richard Avedon. And honestly, you are the closest to that of anyone I've worked with in LA. You know wow. what I mean? Like you. Thank we, you for we, that. We, you know, as the industry is, is so unrecognizable now, there was a time that the, that the photographer, you go in and it was his vision and he told you what the hair should look like. And, and now you go in and it's, it's the stylist who tells you who, what the hair is supposed to look like. And it took me so long to hear that. Like here, I was like, you know, cause a stylist, makeup artist and hairstylist, we're on the same level. And now the stylists have moved up a bit. Because they become styling directors and creative directors. And there was a movement throughout totally. industry. It was uh, Ariana Phillips. And she was the one that I would say kind of made that movement happen. Right. Um, and many other uh, stylists that uh, stepped out of their comfort zone being a stylist actually started creating visions. And, and rightfully so, I think, you know, they become editor in chief later on. Totally. Um, They're but, selling the clothes. Yeah. Because you know? uh, our, our business became more commerce driven. Now, yes. art became separated. And the balance between art and commerce always, for me, is Los Angeles and New York. Yes. And it was so important for me per personally is to find artists that came from at least have drank the water of new york and have read <laughs> understood yeah. my vocabulary because i as you know me i'm i obsess whatever i do i obsess to the point Obsessed. that it's it's not normal no and it's but that's why i love you because we, we we think the same way like that like we're we're artists you know i'll tell you like i can still go sienna miller cover Test Mario Testino in Paris in the courtyard. I've been there. It was shot for what for Anna Winter's direction. That was the second she was actually a pickup. She goes, was another one was better. I remember every detail right. and I, I I I can tell you page number eight. It was a David Sims jumpy shot with a white background with with envy or whatever. Like, for me, those were the things that that drove me to be the photographer I wanted to be. Now okay, you and Thank I had a very and, similar and that, path in the way of um pushing celebrities away in the very beginning of our career. I feel like, right. I know that when you and I first started, and I'm gonna show people how the first picture that we actually worked on together, we started in a very good place in terms of creativity. And that is, we started in a beautiful editorial. Yeah. With Elise, who is one of my favorite models. Uh, yeah, Harper's And Bazaar. this is the first time John I ever met on set, and this was a Malibu Okay, can beach. we talk about so, my first time meeting you? <laughs> Go for it. Okay. So again, like I, I came from New York and um, my agent at the time was saying, there's this um, photographer in LA, he's, he's really big, like you should work with him, he works all the time, he, you know, all this stuff. And, I was, and it was the cover of, of Harper's Bazaar. Um, and I was like, with Elise. And I was like, I don't care who's shooting it, I, I, I want to <laughs> do it. So we get there and you tie... It, it's it's on in Malibu, I believe. It was. Um, there is a huge RV, hair, makeup, um, the whole thing, and Yutsai shows up with a yoga instructor or a masseuse. <laughs> a yoga instructor. <laughs> yeah. And this bitch comes on, and he's like, you know, he gives the direction. He's like completely like, like how I would have picture like an LA hair. Uh, photographer like over the top like crazy all this stuff there's this gorgeous yoga instructor with him and i'm like what the fuck is going on so we you know he gives direction and he i we didn't really connect that for uh, for me i just was like what the fuck um and i'm quiet and so mm -hmm. we do the shoe and it comes out and it's it's stunning but you you kind of freaked me out and i remember <laughs> You asked for me again, and my and um, my agent was like, he really liked you, and I was like, I don't know if I want to work with him again. He like freaked me out, like he was. Oh my god, I did not know this. You didn't? Oh yeah. And so she's like, I'm insisting because he's big. You have to, and I was like, fine. 
And then that was when we fell in love on Beach Funny with Kate Upton. And it, it's been, you've been my, like, my Asian brothers ever since. You know? Totally. <laughs> but you that, know, it's that really was hard. one of my favorite shoots with Kate. <laughs> that was so much fun. I always have pictures to show you guys, but when it's really hard in this industry to break in and, and all of us have this, this journey that is so very different. And I'm sure growing up, you know, it wasn't easy to say, oh, I'm going to be a hairstylist and people just go, yay, go for it. You, no, you know, you when, know I, I, you know, I didn't pick hairstyling and I still don't do hairstyling because I like conditioner or hairspray or, or um, the newest like hot tool. Like, that to me is so secondary. I got into doing hair because it was the medium as an artist that I chose to work in mm -hmm. um, and that I can make money doing. And uh, um, like, I never worked in a salon. Well, I did for two years, but sweeping floors, but I never had like clientele behind a chair. That never interests me. It, I give so much credit to people who go in and do client after client. Like, I and take my hat off to them. They are so strong like i can't even make it through a day doing one girl who's a fucking supermodel that like anyone can make look beautiful and i'm like oh my god i'm so tired but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's not exaggerating but, but, but the I thing, think but the thing is off, but john i think that's what makes our friendship work really well in the very beginning we did a few editorials maybe once a week and became twice a week and i felt like i saw you every single day because right at that time i was quite busy and it was Five day trips, twelve day trip, and remember the Brazil trip was three and a half weeks trip in Brazil, uh -huh. um, and we got to do amazing work such as Apple shoots all the way, very commerce all the way to editorial shoots on the beach with um, with supermodels. So yeah. for me, I needed, I wanted to find somebody who who would not be afraid of who they are and who would still tell me what they want. Because listen, you might say that I'm crazy. you in your own quietness. Oh, I read the, those little side eye look that you get. Oh, I, I get you. You're not crazy. <laughs> you are crazy, but you're not. Like, how you're outwardly crazy is how I'm in inwardly crazy. Yes. Like, so I, what, what you're like, like this with, that's what's happening inside. I, I get you. Like, I totally get you. And, um, you know, and like we said, like, the industry has completely changed. Yes. And, and, and it's great, you know, for whoever is you know whatever. but for your journey for your journey you went through so many different paths and we're going to get into the new journey that you're in right now which is so many paths design. i've had so many paths yes <laughs> <laughs> and it is it's, it's the, from hair to to now interior design and you have a beautiful home in in palm spring well yes. everybody know about that we're going to do a little house tour in a minute because that's so inspirational to oh. to designers one of the things in our industry that people don't realize that creative people are able to do other things. I love to hear that makeup artists are doing something else in a very creative way. Um, I do interior design as well, and I don't yeah. publicize it, but you know you've been to homes I've designed before, and, and yeah, you know, we're very similar taste level. So, yeah. so it works. But in terms of working together, in terms of our journey together, it, I don't want to say it's all, always been easy. There are days I thought yeah. you would walk up and said, I'm never saying yes to this guy again. Yeah. And I've been through that with my producer. Like, he doesn't want to be here. That don't have him here. Yeah. Let's take a break if you have to. And it does happen in this industry. Yeah. And loyalty is so important in the industry. Understanding that we're all human is so important. And I know there are jobs that people judge me based on the first time and never use me again. Right. And I'm grateful for people like you who give me a second chance of another impression of who I am. Yeah. But I have never wavered from who I am. You have never changed who you are. No. And, and we, we find ways to balance and we grow together. And when we right. grow together, we get to create images like this. Yeah. So, yeah. and this is, so one thing about you, John, is that when I get to work with you, and honestly, and maybe I never tell you, this is that, you don't always say yes. In fact, most of the time you say no. <laughs> most of the time you <laughs> shake your head at me and say, I don't think that's, that, that's gonna work. <laughs> and you push me to push you. Yeah. And then we never end up doing exactly what either one of us want. No. I don't think ever one time. <laughs> never. Because, but, that's, but that's how art is. I think it's like, there's like an idea. And then, you know, if, if, if you want someone who's just, replicate something then there's tons of people who could do that but there you know you'll you'll give me inspiration and then i'm like oh and look at every time i walk on anyone's set yours ellen's uh, it could be you know 
Doug Freeman, you know. Uh, Douglas Friedman, who I, haven't, who I haven't seen in so long and I miss. Um, I get nervous every time. And, you know. And that you do. I never understood why. <laughs> I get nervous every time because I think, I'm like, they are going to see, I'm not good enough. I am, you know, who do I think I'm kidding being here? Um, and it's every time. But I think that's what makes me want to work harder. You know, if I went in being like, oh, I got this. I'm, I'm amazing. This is going to be incredible. Then I'm not going to push myself as an artist to rise to the occasion. And, you know, some people go in with their balls out and they're like ready. And I give the impression of that. Like, I don't go in scared. But inside, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, am I going to be able to pull this off? And there's that moment when you say the hair looks gorgeous and I just like relax. You know, I think I, I work well stress like on high stress mm. and um and and you know like you said i i decided in, in the last year or so to to dabble in interior design which has been a love of mine for forever um and i feel the same way like i'm starting to get clients and i walk into a room and i'm like i don't know how to do this i don't know i don't what am i doing here they're gonna like find me out i'm a fraud and then all of a sudden I start to do it and I'm like, oh shit, I, I do know what I'm doing and, and I do belong here. And, you know, there's like this part of me, like there's this one part that's like, I'm going to have the cover of Vogue. I will. And then there's the other part is I am not worthy to work at Supercuts, you know? <laughs> and then somehow, you know, it's, it's such a weird battle that happens in my head. Um, and, but, you know. And I, I know that. And I see that because we have yeah. outside conversations of you becoming a designer you have asked me how do you get started i said you just don't get started you just do it you just like, do it. And and you've been so helpful and so inspiring me to do this because i'm you know i'm i'm in my 40s and you know i'm not that stupid kid anymore you know and so uh, you know approaching a new career you know is way more terrifying now but, but also your exposure to the artists that you got to work with, all those vocabulary about photography, right. about fashion, they translate directly over to interior design Absolutely. or painting. And, and that's what makes, I knew when you told me you want to do interior design, I could imagine the work you're going to do yeah. because I know your aesthetic, how you approach the hair. Because we right. did start our career together as a hair and photographer, but yes. um, a decade later, we're, we're, we're friends. We're, we're, we're beyond that. We, we, we talk outside of work. Um, right. Sometimes we bring outside of work into work and sometimes we do the opposite. But right. at the end of the day, you, you, are, you are your worst enemy when it comes to let your work shine. Because Absolutely. when you work with artists like Alan Bowerworth, who is an iconic photographer I looked up to. In fact, I got to shoot guest campaign for over 10 years because I followed her work. And it was so important for me to, to create as good as her if possible and by right. having my own vision. Then right. you get to work with Douglas Freeman, who, who, by the way, I think is so funny. He is a version of you in a way that he's a photographer right. who shoots fashion, but has incredible eye for interior design. He right. shoots the most beautiful, beautiful interior for architecture. He's and amazing. Yeah. An incredible artist. And that's right. why I think people in the industry sometimes often want to put us in a box. That and you we are, refuse to be in it. I, like, I'm not going to be put in a box. And I'll tell you the box that you refuse to be in. And the box is called being famous. And I know that about you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm never... famous to Jason, and I'm fine with that. <laughs> and I know that about you because every single time we're doing a shoot, it's behind the scene. You're hiding behind somebody. You're, you're hiding. And, and, and to me, it's quite funny because you are so funny in real life. And your sarcasm and your wittiness is... is <laughs> I, we still laugh independently at each other when we're not right. in the room and text each other and say, I'm laughing about something you said. And, what, what, like half of the stuff we can't even talk about right now because it's <laughs> so fucked up what we laugh Inappropriate. About. Inappropriate. Fucking monkey. For the, like fucking for the... monkey. Like we connect. <laughs> and just for fun, I think people need to see how, how oh we God. first got started. <laughs> what, was this, where was that? Is that Switzerland? No, that scarf, I remember that from Brazil. Oh, okay. That was our Brazil trip. I don't remember what this was, but we look cute. <laughs> Wait, you have to show the good one. 
<laughs> okay, that one's gonna be at the end. <laughs> okay. And then, and then also another thing about working in the industry is finding people that you guys Alan. that work well together. And Alan Face and John and I were kind of the three amigos, right? Not three stooges, but three amigos. <laughs> We could be three stooges too, because in the industry, you guys, when you start finding people that gel together, talent, talent wise, you also need to find that personality that can connect with each other. And and I think you worked with Alan on my set for the very first time, and it was also with Kay Upton. Right. And four of us kind of became a group. We're like little little <laughs> sorority group. That, I still, yeah, absolutely. That we really enjoy each other's company, and we love being with each other, and we love making her beautiful, and and we love that she make us laugh like crazy. Right. I remember that shoot that we actually made her into Britney Spears standing in the middle of the set dancing and Ellen and I oh were God. her backup dancers. That's when I fell in love with you guys. And you I were like, like oh you guys are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, what is going on? And just to even watch Kate go from this like 17 year old girl to like this icon, it's so crazy. And And you know, to, be there when she walked on the aisle and like you know i don't have a lot of celebrity friends <clears throat> um because like you said like i go to work and then i go home and i i, I don't know it's just and we're very similar that way because we yeah. talk about this all the time like but yes i work with just a-listers been on red carpet with them but i don't have that natural instinct that that some people are hungry to be want to be their friend or be next to them. Uh, yeah. I want to go home and <laughs> feed my koi fish, dig right. me a hole, planting herbs. And really, yeah. I'm like the, the, the least celebrity friendly photographer. Most people think, oh, he's so outgoing. He probably likes to go out to drinking. I don't drink. No. <laughs> and I, I think like you and I get along really well. Yeah. <laughs> I went you to know? a school to, not learn how to, to learn how to not drink anymore. So, oh, um, Congratulations. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you never knew me when I was a drinker, right? We would no. work we would not be working together anymore. That's I, sure. I don't think so. I, I was very my set I was very um I was I was known for a while to be very snobby in a way that I didn't want drug on my set. I didn't want cocaine. I didn't want to see any of that stuff. I just I was a snob. because I, I came from right. a science background. I was a biologist. Right. You know, I could be a doctor. I'm here, choose to be here to be a photographer. I chose to do this. So I'm choosing to surround myself with people that's going to empower me. I right. have stylists that show up drunk and I would tell my, tell my you know, producer, I said, I don't care how good he is. I don't care how good she is. I don't care what she can bring for me or how much money I can make, but I'm not going to compromise who I am to, to what I do. And, and right. that's, that's something about you. You never compromise. You never compromise when somebody said to you, why aren't you like so-and-so selling a product? All these years, I know every year I ask you, who's sponsoring you? You're like, what's, oh. And and I bite my <laughs> nose to spite my face. You know, the yeah. thing is, like, I, I, wa I remember um, texting Alan. Alan, one time, he posted, like, a water. Like, he was, like, drinking fucking water. Oh, and Alan like, face. Yeah, yeah, Alan yeah. face. And I was, like, and I, so I texted him, and I was, like, bitch, look at you, like, with your fucking, your minimal, minimal water. And he's, like, he's, like, girl, I just made X amount of dollars doing that. And I was, like, I felt sick. And I was, like, why can't I... Why do I always need to be like the struggling artist? Like, but, why, but, you're, but you, I don't, it's not inside of me. And, and I do, I have done it. Like there's, but I have to really believe in, a, a lot of times when I post about a product, I'm not getting paid. It's cause I love it. I'm like, oh my mm -hmm. God, this, this is so amazing. Or like, you guys have to try this, like this. Oh, this. I even remember when you were paired up with the celebrity, I think we can say her name cause we love her, with Sarah yeah. Highland. All right. When you were paired with Sarah Highland, because Alan was doing Sarah so much, Alan's like, John, come and do her hair, because I asked, you know, come. and every time you're like, this is not for me, I love her, but I, yeah. I, I can't do this. And funny enough, but if you didn't have that mentality, you wouldn't be creating art like this, right? Uh, you would not get here. Because a lot of hairstylists in celebrity world never understands this or never get here in terms of vocabulary. And and I have to say, I am so proud to have met you, to allow me to get here too, because it's very easy to fall into the trap of this stereotype of being in Los Angeles, everything's supposed to be glam, and to do raw and beautiful like this on um, on Ferguson, mm -hmm. on Ferguson it's, it was such a beautiful moment, you did such yeah. an incredible transformation. Thanks. But one thing I will say is that I remember on the very last trip, and then we're gonna jump into your house, on the very last trip that we were, 
we've been working, John and I worked together for over a decade and we always talk about, oh, we want to work with this person, work with that person. There was two particular conversations I know was very important for my relationship with you was that I asked you, what is it on your, what was it on your bucket list? What is it that, that you have yet done um, that you want to do? And you say, can you believe it? I never had my own Vogue cover. And well, I was this like, was, yeah, this was years ago. Years ago. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. like, how is that even possible? And I said to you, when I get that first Vogue cover, you would be there with me. Yeah. And, I and you were. Yeah. And, and it have, was. Do you have it there? I don't have it with me. I'm so I know, sorry. It's such, and it's my you know favorite what? one with Amanda. Yeah. It's so we'll good. We'll pop that in. We'll edit that in so you guys can see it. We'll drop it in later. Right. Um, but it's that to me, those kind of relationship that is most important in the industry yeah. that we get to do that. And the second one, it was just recently. We were actually in Bali together shooting and I just booked a job and confirmed. And you overheard me because I was talking about this beautiful, lovely lady, Cindy Crawford. Right. Cindy Crawford was my beard growing yeah. in high school. <laughs> I had posters of Cindy Crawford in my room and I, I fucking idolized her. And, and when we worked with her, I told her, I was like, you were my beard in high school. And just so you know, I don't know you know this, Cindy has two make hairstylists, two makeup artists she worked with forever she's very loyal to them and my relationship with her for about five years six years i would say we worked together for a while and i was so shocked that she allowed me to recommend somebody i know she trusted me and that was shooting her is one thing having her trust me to right. bring you in it right. was it was incredible Dude, now I what was even, more i can't I even was, thank you enough for that like there's there were you were nervous though I was nervous because you're okay. So I've been doing this for a long time and I, you know, I'm not a stranger to working with iconic women, like not to toot my own horn, but you know, but you know, but there was that moment where I'm like curling her hair and I'm like, I'm fucking curling Cindy Crawford's hair. Like my, my 13 year old self is shitting himself right now. Like oh. I, I just wish I can go back to that kid and be like, dude, wait till you see what you're going to be doing. Can I? Because that was one of those moments where I was just like, fuck, this, I can't believe this is happening. And it just happened recently. I thought and all those moments were done. Can I tell you, it's so funny because we say the most stupidest thing to people and you tell her that you love her and she was your beard. When I first met her, first thing came out of my mouth was, Oh my God, I loved you in Playboy. When you did Playboy, I tear those <laughs> pictures out and I loved them so much. And she looked at me like, that's the first thing you're going to say to me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, so but it was, it, listen, we all yeah. go through adolescence in our own way, and Cindy was my adolescent path yes. as well. Cindy, all Cindy the, Crawford and I related Cindy to her for whatever reason. Maybe it's right. the long, beautiful hair, the the Cindy flip that she has, and and right. I and got to, when one guys, if you ever get to meet her, and for those people who have worked with her, can attest to this that she is as authentic as beautiful. Oh my God. In person, as she is, you, you see her in print, she is truly, truly a wonderful human being. No, Not, I don't even care that she's a supermodel. She's an amazing human being. Yeah. And, and, and they that moment, don't meet I the love. people you want to meet. Like, the people you want to meet, they're like, don't meet them because you'll be disappointed. And she so wasn't disappointing. And it, she, yeah, that was... That was so cool. That was super... I don't know. I, I had worked with her when I was assisting... Um, it, but it was, um, I, it's different I when you were key. It's different when you were the It's totally person. different. It's totally different. And I remember it, on set, you ran up to me, you, you whispered, and I goes, she likes the hair. Yeah. <laughs> cause yeah, totally. It's like, I, cause you do the Cindy Crawford hair. Like it's like, do it like Cindy Crawford. And then you're doing that hair on her it's such a trip and yeah. what wonderful times that we had two days with her and the first yeah. day you got to figure out her hair texture and the second day you show up a totally different person you're like i got this i know what to do and i'm gonna do it faster and she's gonna feel so good and she, this right. is one of her favorite favorite but we talked about this she loves this shoe and i, I absolutely love this shoe so much and she looks so fabulous yeah. beautiful so, at every age all right i so want to jump so wait, before we go who yes. are so that you're doing this amazing series right now which is so awesome especially during this time you're giving a, a voice to you know all of us artists and you know um it, it's you're keeping thank you everyone co everyone connected who do you want you know you you've always asked me who do you want to work with who uh, would you love to have on your show 
Who's you, you know, who are some I of could, the people you would first love of all, on this show? And I'm glad all, I got in under the wire before you start having the big people. <laughs> no. First of all, I created this show because I was having this conversation with Fiona and, and friends who are in the business going, what am I going to do after all this, right? What's going to happen and all this? And I said, well, nothing should ever happen. You should continue to talk about your work and love your work and share your work on a platform like Instagram Live or YouTube. But not everybody has the capability to anchor that themselves. So... I love being in front of camera, obviously. I've done a lot of television shows. You're so and good I'm, at it. And, and, and with you guys' encouragement, with people's encouragement, I said, well, why not? Let's create a list of people that, and see who will say yes. And I have to say, in the very beginning, it was hard. People were like, what do you mean? You're going to do a talk show? How many people are going to watch? Five? And I keep saying, I don't care how many people watch. I care about what we talk about, mm -hmm. what we get to share, and who wants to see it is on their own time and their yeah. own journey, but allow us to have this journey as artists to speak to each other. So this is this, this is week two, believe it or not, I'm crazy. Um, week three lined up next week, I have Jason Wu coming on, and oh my God, my, my idol. Uh, so and crazy. He's also Taiwanese. And then I have um, Kierna uh, Shipka coming on from, uh, she has a show on Netflix, and she oh, was right, right, Madman. Right. And so when those things are happening, and the, last week, something really, this, Early this week, something really incredible happened for me about this show is that I, I'm a type of person like you. I don't reach out to celebrity friends or, or supermodels and say, do me a favor. I never ask for favors. I just right, don't right. because then, I, cause I can never get back if they ask for it back. Just, right, right. Just, you know? So um, Danielle Priano was on and she gave a she, heartfelt She blew story. me away. I watched that interview like three times. She's she coming is, back. She, she has a lot to share. She has she's a lot so of incredible. She's coming back. So when she was sharing her story, how she had triumphed through her journey, and JLo have helped her overcome all her insecurity and made a pivotal life change for herself, um, and she gave credit to people like Chrissy Teigen. And after that interview, I got a DM from Chrissy. <laughs> and you and I know Chrissy for I, 15 forever. years, forever. I, I sent her, a, I found a photo of me and her, and I sent it to her the other day. And I was like, and it was from like eight years ago. I was like, oh my God, I found this photo of you before you were Chrissy Teigen. <laughs> so she said to me, she texted me and simply said, if you want me on your show, I will do it. I love it. That yeah. was like the moment for me that, okay, I'm doing the right thing. Because listen, even though we grew up together in the industry, Chrissy Teigen is on a whole different stratosphere. Yeah. And just so you guys know, none of these people who come on the show doing me favors. <laughs> it's a lot of work and, <laughs> and, and make a lot of big reason I'm doing this so I can wake up every day to get to talk about what I love to do with people right. I love. Right. So I love Chrissy and I'm so happy that you say yes to come on the show. And that, that's, that's really important to me. Another person on my bucket list for this show would be Ashley Graham. Because she herself, which has a beautiful show, um, a talk show, a podcast that you guys should listen to. Um, it's, she's amazing. I mean, everything she does. We got to share the same stage together as a, a judge on American Beauty Star. She, in fact, championed me to be on that show because she wanted to make sure there was diversity on the panel. And I want everybody to, to know her because she gets to interview so many people. I want to be able to get to interview her. Right. And, and oh. that's, that's on my list for sure. Nice. But, yeah. So I think well, with Ash, that, if you're watching this, you know, <laughs> of all Ash, the people in the world that he could have mentioned, <laughs> it would be nice if you did this. And we know her really well as well. We travel with her. So um, let's talk about your house. We're going to get it first. Let's do a little, I'm going to give a little um, slideshow here. I just want to show people your work. And just so you know, John, if we do cut off, we'll join back in. Okay. Uh, because we're running a little bit over time. But if okay. it does get cut off, we'll come back so you guys can rejoin us uh, just in case Instagram does that to us. So interior design. Yes. Tell me, tell me why. Why interior design? Yeah. Um, I, I've always, I've been, in, I've been into it. I think it's in, you know, being a gay man. It's like in my DNA. So um, I've, I, I've always been interested in it. And then in the last couple of years, when I started owning, like having a home and, and it, um, it became more of, uh, of a passion of mine. And, and this is started, in Palm Springs, by the way, guys. In Palm Springs. So I live in Palm Springs now. Um, and so it's, it, it, so doing hair for so long, I was feeling stale. 
doing it. Mm. You know, like out of the 80 million shoots you do, only like 10 of them, you get to be creative. The, the rest is just like pretty hair and it's beachy. And, and, and after a while it becomes a job. And I still love that job, but it creatively, I, I wasn't getting from it what I, what I needed. Um, and so interior design all of a sudden was fulfilling me in that way. And, and the, you said it before, like it hits the same spot in my head like with mm -hmm. balance and color and, you know, it, it I don't know. It's I in your blood. I, I can't, I can't explain why I love it so much. It, it makes me so happy. Um, well, one thing about you, if I was, one thing about you, what I think is really fascinating is that you love mid-century modern and it goes with the architecture of the home that you have. However, there's a part of you that you're pretty much like you're in the twenties and thirties and forties. That's who you are. You're not from this decade. I'm you're not from me. this decade. You're I, not. I, I've and, been saying that for years. <laughs> and and because of that, that your references or your vocabulary, that your understanding of the old film you was, they really come through in your work. And mm -hmm. guys, I, I doing this type of work, doing interior design to have a specific taste level to do this work. I think it's so difficult because it can go tacky really, really quick. Especially and, if it's over the top, yeah. And, and, and to yeah. me, again, it's how you use, you do your work as a hairstylist about editing, about less is more or more is more, when is appropriate, what's the first thing you want to see, what's the second thing you want to see, foreground, middle ground, background. And all these languages are the same throughout, whether it's interior design or it's um, in the artistry of your DNA. I think right. that is so important. I absolutely love, love the eclecticness of your work. Yeah. And when you share with somebody that you post, uh, when you share with everybody something that you posted on Instagram the other day about Airbnb, I was so proud of you when I saw that post. Oh, right. So um, I also Airbnb my home for just because you can make a shit ton of money. And tell everybody the, the, the Instagram name. Oh, um, Bahada House is the name of it which i don't post on so it, it, i think i posted on it last year so but um um airbnb like a, a couple months ago maybe a, probably a year ago reached out to me and they wanted to replicate my house for their new office in, uh, in san francisco which is That's super super cool and it, it was one of those moments like when I was a kid, you know, starting doing hair, it was one of those moments where I'm like, because you doubt yourself a lot. And I was like, if this huge corporation thinks it's good enough, then I think that I could be good enough. You know, I'm, I'm just starting this. You know, I'll, I'll look back at some of the stuff I'm doing now and I'll be mortified. In no, you won't. No, great. Do me but a favor. I, but I'm just starting. I, you know, I'm that 19 year old kid again. Oh. Um, that's, that's awesome. Over. Can you give us a tour really quickly? Let's do yes. a walkthrough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, here, you guys ready? So how do I flip this, right? Okay. I'm also an 80 year old woman when it comes to um, technology. Okay, here we go. So if you just joined us, this is John Ruggiero, hairstylist, also interior designer. He's giving us a house tour okay. of his home in Palm Spring. And if you want, you can Airbnb and get to stay here. No, not till June because there is a pandemic happening. So yes, you can't. <laughs> not till June, but you can book ahead. Yeah, book ahead. Um, okay, so this is my, so uh, my house is from 1960. Um, it's a mid-century home. This is the, um, what is that? This is my, my buddy. Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> Dumbass. Um, so yeah, this is, so I, I, I love the eclecticness of the, the, the frames, the how you use in different sizes and, and yeah. you go, so you really do go out and source from open markets, right? Yeah, you know, like you some can, of the stuff I, I've gotten for a dollar, some of it I've gotten, you know, I think some of it I got in like places like Paris. Some of them are friends of mine. That's another thing about um, our industry is that I get to work with photographers and this is kind of cool. I'm awful at this, sorry. I get no, to work with great. photographers and they'll let me, um, they'll give me uh, some of their work. Here's, yeah. here's my the huge, kitchen, my huge kitchen. Um, all right, so that's outside. 
And look at each one of those furniture pieces. You handpick each one of them. That's what yeah, each one. This, well. Okay, so this sofa, I saw on someone threw it away. It was in their, it was in their garbage, and I begged <laughs> my I begged my friend to come at ten o'clock at night with his truck, and pick it up. And I literally picked it out of someone's garbage and had it re re um, recovered. I love that. Yeah. So so you know that's trash, and then you know some things are like little trash and then some things are a little more high-end um and the same with the art like the art i have some like here's some insane but you know what's missing john what? i don't see any of our work together on these Dude, walls it's, i it why is that <laughs> why is that that is my prints are very expensive right <laughs> a little outdoor area i'm i'm really not doing it justice because i'm um, I'll make sure you post photos on your Instagram. So guys, make sure you follow John's Instagram and take a look at his creation from from hair to to interior design. That's my my friend Hank. Um, he is an incredible artist out here in Palm Springs. I love that. And yeah, if you look, it's like it's um, Daniel Craig coming out of the water. Yeah. If you so John, let's have you have a seat again. We have a little quick Q and A. All right, you perfect. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your home with us and yeah. i stayed there before you guys and it's lovely it's beautiful the pool is amazing and it's reasonably priced so i'm giving you a little plug on airbnb <laughs> so when the when the pandemic is over you guys yes. i believe it's early. like mid-june you can start booking again yes it's insane. that's amazing so a couple of questions that people are asking is if back again when you were younger anything anything you have done you would have changed to get to where you're at. Any regrets, basically? Not one. Wow, that's great. Yeah, because if, if I, all the mistakes I made, if I didn't make them, I wouldn't be where I am today. And where I am today is exactly where I wouldn't want to be, you know? Now, if you had to choose between interior design and hairstyling, which one would it be? Well, I already did hairstyling, so interior design. I, I, I want my cover of Architectural Digest, goddamn it. Oh, well, that you're going to have to call Douglas Freeman for that one. Oh, don't worry. I've already told him. I'm like, I, just, I was like, just know it's going to happen one day. Because that I can't help you with. I got yeah. you the Vogue's and the Harper's, but I don't know if I can get you the Architectural right. Digest. Right. Um, what, are, what are the things that you do now that keep you continue to be inspired what you do? Um... Like, what do you mean? Uh, what like, inspires you, right? For me, oh, my, oh. my koi fish inspires me. Right. Um, interior design, like uh, architecture. Um, I recently went to Paris for the... I've been to Paris a, a bunch of times, but I recently went, um, and went and looked at furniture and architecture instead of, like, doing the... Because I used to do the shows every season. Mm. And, and so I went with a completely different eye and just to go there and, and look at it through a design, uh, it, like a interior designer's eye was, was so inspiring. And um, I, I could already see like things that I was already, that I was really into as far as interiors a year ago, I'm already getting over, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm already like, I'm, evolving. I'm already getting You're over evolving. like mid-century and I'm like, oh shit, I live in a mid-century <laughs> house. Um, because I, I, I think, you have with any artistic job you have to stay one step ahead of it and i remember ward telling me something that i still hold very true to this day he said do not look at what other hairstylists are doing don't mm -hmm. look at like what so and so is doing because you, then you start emulating them do your own thing look at art look at uh photography look at but not fashion photography look at you know, uh, things that will inspire you. Go to a museum, go to a, a fucking museum and look at art in real life. That's where I find inspiration for hair. That's where I find inspiration for um, design. You know, it's, it, it, I, re I used to work with Michelle Comps. Do you know Michelle? Oh, Do I know. You? So Michelle is old school as shit. And he would have references of like a Picasso, um, you know, like he would have these like really bizarre like references and he's like, I want the hair to feel like this. And I understood. 
I understood that more than showing me a picture of like Kate Moss and being like, I want nice. to hear like this. You show me like, a, you know, like some Picasso with the, you know, the nose is over here. And I'm like, oh, you understand. Okay, I totally understand well, what you want John, to feel like. That's a great advice. And that's what a great advice from your mentor. We're running out of time. We have a lot okay. to talk about. That All means right. that we're going to have to invite you back so we can talk more. All I right. can be more proud of our friendship. I and know, on that excited. note, I think everybody needs to understand. <laughs> <laughs> this is this kind of describe our friendship. This isn't Bali. <laughs> we laugh a lot, we joke a lot, we create a lot together, and I think that's what we all need right now. It's a little touching, little hugging, and if you can do it in a bathtub, go for it, everyone. Right. I will. I will have to say is that um, I am so proud of you, the Thanks. journey you're taking, and you, doing something you completely well. outside the box of what you're used to. And I couldn't be more proud to be your friend outside uh, of being a co-worker and i know we're thank not... you for being a friend oh, your favorite show <laughs> <laughs> i don't know the music right to that song right now oh but, uh, <laughs> it's okay we'll peep it out but thank you guys everyone for joining us and lots of people asking questions and the question they have what will you look like without your mustache do it take a picture and post online so people can see what <laughs> me without you a without a mustache no <laughs> well you with that note I will, I, know will, I will be without my clothes before I will be without my mustache. And that's a different <laughs> show and a different conversation we can have. And that was a different, and that was also a different um, career. Yes. So maybe next time we'll talk about that. that maybe career. we will. But the real truth about John Ruggiero. <laughs> How do you go from the bottom to the top in this career? And <laughs> I'll leave you with that, everyone. Or do both. <laughs> do both. Be versatile. I think that's a theme for this talk. Just be versatile. Just Interior be versatile, design, you guys. makeup, top or bottom. Do not right. judge. And totally. thank you, everyone. And I love you. Stay, thank you so much for having me. Please stay safe and stay healthy out there. And I'll see you next